Hey everyone, it's Talia here. Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we are going to do this floral nail design featuring some really fun peachy coral tones. Uh, this customer had ordered Talia's choice for all of the sets that she ordered and this was one of the ones that I decided to come up with for her. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is just prep all of our nails here. I'm going to use the prep formula from Coco and Claire and that just acts as like a two-sided tape so that the gel that I choose to use on the nails is going to stick really well. You just let that air dry. Uh, in one of my recent haul videos I shared these builder formulas that recently came out and this kind of peachy one I really really like so I knew I wanted to use it not only in a nail design but as my inspiration for whatever design I came up with uh, so I'm gonna do two coats down of this one and then I'm gonna take this color It's number 131 it's called a tender kiss and it is a really nice peach shimmer it's got like a gold shimmer to it now if you want this to be pretty opaque then you're gonna have to do three coats of it I believe uh, because it is a little bit on the sheer side I think I ended up doing two because I knew I I was going to go in and do some stamping on top of it and I don't mind if the nails are a little bit sheer I think it kind of gives like a really cool look to the nail design too so I'm gonna put these down on both the thumbnail and the pinky nail At this point, I wasn't too sure what I was going to do on these other two nails here, so I pulled two kind of peachy colors that were a little bit flatter, except one had a shimmer in it, and when I held it up to the nails, I decided that it needed a little bit more of a flatter color for the design. I wasn't too sure at this point whether I was going to do some stamping on it or what, uh, but I knew I didn't want any more shimmery nails. So I picked this one here. It's actually called Peachy Keen from Coco and Claire, and it is a great peachy light kind of neutral color, and it applied really nicely nicely in two coats. I feel like these three colors together just pair so nicely and you could leave it like this. However, I decided I wanted to use this everything chrome that I recently got in from Coco and Claire as well uh, because I was kind of curious how it would look over top of a lighter shade like this one. Uh, so I'm going to go in with a tack free top coat and I believe I cure my tack free top coats for about... 20 seconds or so and then I'm gonna go in with uh, the chrome right on top of it and I prefer to use my glove like you guys are seeing here I just find that I'm able to kind of make it soak into the tack free top coat a little bit better and the brush I'm gonna leave uh, in the description box below it's my favorite brush for cleaning off chrome because it doesn't scratch the chrome or anything and it gets most of it off so I decided to do this on both of those two peachy colored nails and I really like the effect of it I love these white type of chrome because I find them to be so versatile over any shade. Now when I'm working on press on nails, I prefer to stamp over top of a matte top coat. I find I'm just able to get a really nice smooth image this way and a lot of times when I'm stamping, I will go in last minute with a chrome as well. So I like to do a chrome stamping technique and you cannot do that on top of a tacky surface because the chrome will not go where you want it to go. Uh, so if you're going to do chrome stamping over top of any surface, you want it to be matte so that it only sticks to the stamping polish. So I did a matte top coat uh, on four of the nails and and I do include like a one color set very similar to what I did when I was with it designs for the press-ons as well uh, and so this one I decided that I wanted to do that other light peachy color that I was trying to decide between and I wanted to make this one matte because I knew the majority of the nails of the design that I was actually doing were going to be all shiny so this way she could mix and match the matte nails into her other ones if she wanted to tone them down so I'm using this velvet confetti in gold and I like to go in and kind of glob it on at first and then I wipe off my brush flip the nails around like this and kind of smooth it all out a little bit I find this to work the best for when you're working with these kind of more glittery top coats at this point, I really wanted to see how this everything chrome stamped. I do like working with white chromes for stamping if I'm gonna do any sort of white floral designs or anything like that. So I'm gonna put some of the chrome on a separate stamper. I use it specifically for chrome. I'm gonna take my white sticky polish, go down on the stamping plate that I'm going to use, lift it up, stamp it down just like you normally would. However, the white sticky polish takes, uh, it's a little bit wetter than some of the other sticky polishes. So I like to let this one sit for a little bit 
before I go in with my chrome, not too long, probably about 10 seconds or so, but if you go in right away, you're gonna kind of smear that white one. And when it comes to sticky stamping polish, I tend to use the clear like 95% of the time. The only time I tend to reach for the black and the white is if I want like a black or white chrome on top of it. Other than that, I use the clear because I prefer it to stick to the color of chrome that I'm working with, if that makes sense. Uh, so initially I tried to go down with the outline being a gold and I liked it, but it just didn't pop as much as I wanted it to. Uh, so I'm just going to clean off my stamper here. And when you're cleaning off your nail, especially when you're on top of that matte surface, you can use acetone and it just comes off so nice and clean. So I'm going to actually go in and outline with this brown stamping polish I tend to outline with either a black a brown or a gray if I don't want it to be as harsh then I tend to go in with a brown which is a lot of times when I'm stamping I play around with colors just like this and actually you can see this one here um, this one started to separate for some reason when I was trying to stamp it so I ended up just taking it off and redoing it again and I wanted to show you guys that and leave it in because stamping doesn't always go smooth for me either but I just keep with it and I've learned a lot of tricks with it as well so uh, like I said I'm gonna let this one sit for a little bit and I would go in with my white chrome on top of it and it just adds a little bit of a fun sheen to the design and also with that chrome that we went in as the background underneath you're gonna see like a chrome on chrome stamping look it actually turns out really cool when we top coat it here so uh, for the center of the floral I decided to use a gold stamping polish my favorites are number 51 or number 123 I believe I believe I use 123 in this one, which is just a little bit lighter. And I thought that that gold paired a little bit better with some of the gold hues that we have in the gel polish colors that we chose. Uh, for the brown, I initially tried this one, which I, I, it's kind of like a reddish brown color. It's not the darkest brown that they have. It's not my favorite one, uh, but I do like it. Another one of my favorite stamping polishes specifically for floral stamping is number 124. It's more of a moss green than say like a darker green or a lighter green and I just find it works really really well for floral designs. So I'm going to go in and just pull some of the greenery from this stamping plate. Um, I tend when it comes to florals to not use what is supposed to be paired with each of the florals if that makes sense. I kind of just pull my favorite greenery uh, from the stamping plate and just use it multiple times. Now another stamping polish that I highly recommend getting is this one. This is number 139. It is a super, super dark green. It's almost black looking. So again, it's a polish that I like to use when I'm going to do an outline, but I don't want to use a black. Uh, so for this design specifically, I don't want to stamp the leaves outlined in black. I want to use a really nice dark green. And I decided to go in and do some more florals to kind of just make it look like it is a full entire floral nail on this one. Uh, but when I went in and did the greenery, which you guys are going to see right away it kind of leaves like a little hook where it looks like there should be another flower on top of it again I just use whatever florals I feel like grabbing uh, so then I felt like I needed to add another flower to kind of complete it and half the time when I'm stamping I just kind of roll with it and see how the entire design comes out add more as I need to take some more away and it just eventually all comes together <laughs> I love pairing swirls with florals as kind of the accents of different nails that I'm going to do. Uh, so this plate here and specifically this swirl on this plate is one of my favorite swirls. I find it just works with so many different nail designs. Uh, so again, I'm going to go in with my favorite brown here and I'm going to stamp this one down. This is uh, like a dark rich brown, but it's got like a gold sheen to it. Again, I'm tying in the gold colors that we have seen throughout the entire nail design here. Uh, so on the thumbnail, I did decide to add in just one more flower because I knew that I wanted a little bit more florals on this nail design but not too many so I just put it kind of off centered uh, and I also didn't want to cover up that really beautiful peachy shimmery gold shade that we had I just love that color I 
I have done quite a few nail designs for this particular client and I kind of have an idea of her style. So she really likes bling and she really likes florals and like kind of more feminine type of nail designs. Uh, she loves pink nails but uh, we did want to mix up the color palettes and one of the best ways I find to mix up color palettes such as using a peachy one like this is to tone it down with a little bit more of the white. So I was really happy with how this design came together uh, with all of the different elements that I was able to incorporate into it and sometimes when I sit down to design nail sets this is just how it goes I just kind of play around until I get a look that I'm after but I tend to start with a color palette first and a theme uh, so we started with that peachy like first color as my color palette and I'm gonna build off of that um, and then I knew that I wanted to do some florals with this particular design too so she did add crystals to her order so I'm gonna go in and add some crystal accents uh, just to the pointer nail here I am using the Coco and Claire gem gel uh, this is a runny gem gel uh, so I tend to put it down with the brush that it comes with which I really like uh, and then I take another brush and kind of smooth it out a little bit more the thing with this one though is I do find it is quite runny so my gems tend to kind of run all over the nails here you'll see them kind of start to separate a little bit so you just have to make sure that you are tucking your gems in wherever you want them to go and after you have cured that I definitely recommend going in with your top coat and surrounding the crystals a little bit as well I decided to use that velvet uh, confetti top coat in gold for this nail design again to kind of tie in it with her one color set but I really love the contrast of crystal nails on top of a matte nail as well I just think it looks so pretty so I wanted to see how that was going to come together This is another thing that I really like about the Coco and Claire matte top coat is if I go over top of say a chrome like this, once I go on top of it with a shiny, the chrome still pops out. There has been some other uh, matte top coats that I tried where you put them over top of say an effect nail like a chrome. And if you go in and do a shiny on top of it after that, you lose that effect completely. And that does not happen with the Coco and Claire matte, which I absolutely love about it. I could rave about this top coat forever. Um, it is definitely one of my favorite matte top coats. So this is how the design came together. I do have two other designs for this particular client to share with you guys. So stay tuned for those. Comment below and let me know which one you want to see next.